Hello and welcome to Ghana Country. When is the last time you saw a president of the United States of America get on national television or on his social media platforms and talk about the importance of praying for our country, the importance of the Bible, uh, the importance of spending time in prayer without a some type of natural disaster or some type of war or something major happening in the country. But yet here he is on national television talking about prayer. That is exactly what President-elect Donald Trump is doing and has done. I want to read you a verse from the Bible in 1 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. It is important that you and I as Christians are praying for the President of the United States It is important for you and I to be praying for those that are elected. And I want you to watch this. I mean, this is simply incredible to listen to uh, Donald Trump. He's talking about how we don't answer to bureaucrats in Washington, how we only answer to God. And whenever you have a president, probably the most powerful man, he he is the most powerful man in the world. And uh, as president, even as president elect Donald Trump, and he's soon to be president Donald Trump. He would be the most powerful man in the world. And here he is talking about the Bible. I wish the Bible he's holding. I love it. It's a King James Bible. That's my that's the Bible I use is the King James Bible. And there he is holding a King James Bible. And he's talking about how we only answer to God and how we need to be praying. Listen, this clip is 51 seconds, but it is well worth you listening to the president of the United States talk about the importance of prayer and the Bible. Sir, to bureaucrats in Washington, we answer to God in heaven. Christians are under siege. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God, and we have to protect anything that is pro-God. We must defend God in the public square and not allow the media or the left-wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be, again, a great nation. Our founding fathers did a tremendous thing when they built America on Judeo-Christian values. Now that foundation is under attack, perhaps as never before. What can we do? Stand up, speak out, and pray that God will bless America again. I'm proud. There you have it. There he is, asking America to pray again, asking America to um, to get with to get with God and uh, which is very, very important as far as our nation. It's it's incredible to listen to him talk about the importance of prayer and and, and to, to, to pray again. I mean, when's the last time? I mean, as a pastor, I'm continually asking my people and my church and all of you to pray. But when's the last time you saw a president of the United States of America I get on TV and to pray and to ask you and I to pray as American citizens. It's incredible. I like this as well. I mean, it's incredible all the things that Trump is doing and the people that he's already put into place, the appointments that he's making. I love the team that he's building. I think it's going to be great. But also there was this woke agenda that was sweeping our country, especially a lot of a lot of times in our schools to where they was promoting this transgender garbage where they was saying that there's more than two genders and there's 150 genders and there's this and there's that. But whenever you look at um, the, 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 the body, there's only two genders. And God only made male and female. You go back all the way to the garden, whenever he made Adam and then he made Eve, he made only male and female, uh, which is very important. But, but you have this group, this group from the hardcore left that is pushing this idea that there's more than one gender. I want you to watch this. Listen to this as Trump says that he's going to ask Congress to, pra- to pass a bill about this a particular issue. And so, so listen to this for a moment. I will ask Congress to pass a bill establishing that the only genders recognized by the United States government are male and female, and they are assigned at birth. There you have it. Talking about male and female, and then that they are only assigned at birth. I mean, this is so refreshing, uh, so, so refreshing to hear. You know, the president of the United States talking about um, this uh, idea of there's only there's only two genders. And he's asking Congress to pass a bill. 
Now, now look at this. Uh, let's keep keep watching. Uh, this is good. Keep keep watch this video here that President Elect Donald Trump is saying. Now he's talking about teachers and he's talking about schools. Any teacher or school official suggests to a child that they could be trapped in the wrong body, they will be faced with severe consequences, including potential civil rights violations for sex discrimination and the elimination of federal funding. As part of our new credentialing body for teachers, we will promote positive education about the nuclear family, the roles of mothers and fathers, and celebrating rather than erasing the things that make men and women different and unique. That is, that is truly, truly amazing. And um, that, that Donald Trump is promoting and that he is pushing that. Now let's keep, let's keep watching. Uh, let's keep watching. The bill will also make clear that Title IX prohibits men from participating in women's sports, and we will protect the rights of parents from being forced to allow their minor child to assume a gender which is new and an identity without the parent's consent. The identity will not be new, and it will not be without parental consent. No serious country should be telling its children that they were born with the wrong gender. He's right. I mean, no country should be telling their children this. And no, and no school should be doing anything behind the back of the parents. And so you talk about changes. You're talking about the changes that have been made just in the beginning. I mean, he's not even president yet, but the changes and the things that's happening in the world. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this reminds me always that your vote does count. Your vote does count. It sickens me whenever I hear people talk about how their vote doesn't count and that they're not going to go to the polls and that they're not going to go vote. It, it absolutely sickens me. Every one of us, every one of you that didn't vote are to be ashamed of yourself. Now, I'm thankful that we won the House, we won the Senate, and we won uh, control of the White House. I'm thankful for that. But still, there was Christians who did not even get out and vote. And there was people that stayed home. They'll get on social media and they'll complain. They'll get on, uh, they'll, they'll go to Thanksgiving lunch and they'll complain. Uh, they'll complain about everything. They'll complain about the economy. They'll complain about the direction of this country, <clears throat> but yet they won't vote. There are many Christians that will complain about the direction of this country, but yet they won't even pray for their country. They haven't spent five minutes praying for their country this week, and they'll be mad, and there'll be preachers that'll get up and Christians, and they'll blast Donald Trump, and they'll blast Joe Biden, and they'll blast everybody, but yet they won't even pray and ask God to be with their country, to be with their president. Listen, I don't agree with Joe Biden on much of anything, honestly. I'm thankful that he is talking like he wants to have a smooth transition. He invited Trump to the White House. That looks like that went well. And I'm hoping that there <laughs> excuse me, is that smooth transition of power, which it should be, and hopefully it is. But the facts of the matter are, I don't agree with Joe, My, Joe Biden on much of anything, but there hasn't been a single day go by in his entire presidency that I haven't prayed for him. I prayed for him back whenever he was Barack Obama's vice president for eight years. As I prayed for Barack Obama, I, Barack Obama, I'm not putting a feather in my hat. I'm just saying it's the importance of praying. It's the importance of praying. And there are so many Christians, they are, they are relaxed in their attitude toward their country. They're, they're relaxed in their attitude toward their church. They're relaxed in their attitude toward their family. They're relaxed in their attitude of prayer. They don't pray. Uh, they don't tell people about Jesus. They don't witness. They don't go soul winning. I mean, there, there's so many things that we as Christians are to be doing that we're not doing. I mean, one of this country's uh, headed in the direction that it's headed. Now, I'm so thankful that we, that many of us, through means of social media and through means of um, um, whatever means that we have, have done all that we could. I'm so thankful for people like Charlie Kirk and others um, that have gotten the message out. And a lot of Christians, it seems that they're waking up, but there's still millions more who are not yet awake that I want to over the next uh, several years. I want to get them awake. And so I want to push and work, you know, to get as many people as we can engaged in this political arena. There are so many good things that we can do. There are so many good things that we can do. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, I would encourage you to go ahead and subscribe. But there are so many good things we can do. The first thing is we can start with prayer. The second thing we can start with by being faithful to our church and by being engaged in trying to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, the fourth thing is we could be engaged by praying for our church 
pray for our pastors and pray for our church leaders and pray for those we go to church with and pray for our elected officials. Call their name out to God every single day. Pray for them. Get engaged. Stay engaged with them. Send them text messages and letters and, and, and phone calls. Let them know that you're praying for them and let them know the direction that you want this nation to go. Be engaged. Of course, have a good attitude and a good spirit, but be engaged in what's happening. Know what's going on in your country. Know what's going on in your state. Know what's going on in your city. Know what's going on in your county. It is very, very important. Very important. I watched those Donald Trump clips and it excited me. One, to see President-elect Donald Trump calling on you and I to pray. Calling on us to read our Bible. Um, yeah, I know he's selling that Lee Kriegman Bible. And I love it. In the beginning of the video, he talks about how it's a King James Bible. I love that. I'm a King James Bible man. Calling on Congress to make a bill that there's two genders. Guys need to stay out of girls' sports. That if there's going to be sports, it's girls on girls and, and boys on boys. It's not, it's not, you don't, I mean, unless it's a co-ed sport, and I understand that sometimes there are co-eds, but they're co-ed sports, and that's how they're meant to be. It's not a guy getting in a boxing ring with a girl. It's not a guy out there playing on a girl's basketball team, a girl's basketball team, or a, or a guy playing on a, a tennis, on a girl's tennis team, or a guy playing on a, on a girl's, uh, whatever sport it is. Now, if it's a co-ed sport, that's different. And I know that there are co-ed sports. But guys and girls should not be playing. Girls shouldn't be playing on a guy's basketball team. A girl shouldn't be playing on a guy's football team. I mean, you have girl sports and you have guy sports. That's how it ought to be. That's how it ought to be. And I'm so thankful that we have President-elect Donald Trump calling on Congress to make that a bill. Let's pray for President Donald Trump. Let's pray for J.D. Vance. Let's pray for their families. Let's pray for those that are elected in office. Let's keep their names before God every single day. Thank you for watching God of Country. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for tuning in. I pray that you have a great day. I hope that things go well for you today. Things go well for you for the rest of this week. May God bless you, and may God continue to bless the great United States of America.